Keto and crime, keto and crime. We uncover the crime on keto and crime. Keto and crime, keto and crime. Now is the time for keto and crime. Hey everyone, Tracy here from Keto and Crime. Thank you so much to every single one of my patrons and channel members. You make this possible. And uh, you're one of the reasons I do this. And I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if I haven't said it before, thank you. I'll sing it. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me and letting me geek out, not making fun of me like a lot of other people do because I like weird stuff about crime and dark history. Re, re. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Let's rejoin my video with Carrie, Mike, talking about our more obscure uh, favorite horror movies. And as you can see, Mike is still bitching about Scream and Nev Campbell. That's why we love Mike. Let's jump in. Thousand years later. August to a horror convention she's doing in Jersey. You're so funny. <laughs> Is it HorrorCon? Is it in Jersey this year? I don't know if it's that. It's one of them. MonsterCon, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. But, like, um, she's done a bunch of them. Like, all these places that I've been the last year. Like, when I was in Texas, when I was in L.A., every single time she's there at a HorrorCon, like, a week later. And I'm always like, ah, oh, should I stay? You got to go to that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. So that we just finished with what? Mine, the Babadook. Mine. So it's it's Mike's turn. Right. Oh, sorry. I thought it was yours. Um. Okay. okay. Since we're talking about them, I'm gonna go with. I believe it was from 1980 something. Dolls. Have you guys seen? Oh, dolls? I remember the cover of this. For my mm -hmm. video store, you know, it always creeped me out. I don't think I've seen it, but I remember the cover. Oh, it's so good. It, yeah, this is like the, the prototypical blockbuster movie. This is like the kind of movie that you would stumble into blockbuster with your family and look through the aisles and be like, oh, that's a cool cover and get it. And you'd end up watching it late at night. And it's so good. So it's basically kind of like, it feels like an old school fable it's sort of like a morality play and it just has everything it has like a castle a questionable toy maker creepy dolls 80s punk rock chicks it just has everything it is so good and it has like all practical effect like it is so old school it's just it just feels like such a classic movie it's like the kind of stuff that would never get made now it is so good <laughs> That's I think I've alley. seen it once and I remember it being, it left quite an impression on me because it's, I, it's one I haven't forgotten. So, <laughs> And it's one of those things where it's like, everybody gets what they deserve, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else was kind of like that? Did you ever watch Tales from the Crypt? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were all like kind of morality plays. Yes. Everybody gets what they deserve. Yeah. That and uh, that and uh, Tales from the Dark Side. I was more of a yes. Tales from the Dark Side person than Tales from the Crypt, but kind of like that, yeah. Um, so my next one is, uh, you're going to see a pattern with mine. Uh, 1977's Day of the Animals. Uh, with Leslie Nielsen. Uh, it is uh, one of the first environmental horrors. Um, if that's a genre, but uh, basically about the depletion of the ozone layer. Uh, animals are affected by the radiation and start killing people, uh, particularly in high altitudes. And if you've never seen Leslie Nielsen fight a bear, then you need to go see <laughs> this movie. <laughs>
because that is the best part of the whole movie. But he plays kind of an asshole. A lot of people just know him from the neck of gun, but he used to play villains in a lot of movies. And uh, he definitely is in this one. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> if you've never seen Leslie Nielsen fight a bear, well, I haven't. <laughs> 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 I've never heard of that one either. You really know the obscure ones. And uh, it, it, if, if you don't like, I mean, can I give you a spoiler yeah. for it? Yeah, yeah. If you don't like animals dying, I wouldn't say this one because in the end, the radiation kills them. Like they get so much of a radiation. There's just, it, it basically all takes place in this little mountain town because they're so high altitude. It's in California. And they, um, the radiation just kill you. It goes out of this town. There's dead animals everywhere. I mean, they're not real animals, of course, but dead animals everywhere. So it's a happy ending for the humans, but not so much for the animals. Aww. I don't care about the humans. I just want the animals. Because yeah. <laughs> even when I'm, it's like Cujo, I was mad. You know, I didn't want Cujo to die, even though Cujo no, was I a was rabid on dog. His side. <laughs> I was on his side. I'm like, first of all, you know, you don't come up there with no gas and, 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 whatever <laughs> should have been minding their own damn business exactly and that would never happen today because they would have had a cell phone and called for uh and called for sale <laughs> uh, do you know i've still never even watched pet cemetery because i'm afraid it's gonna be like animals being harmed no you need to see it yeah, yeah. it's it's really good actually you the only animal that dies is re resurrected oh okay that's good <laughs> and that's all yeah. i'll say <laughs> yeah it's good um okay let's see oh well just really quick this is not on my list but it is an es esoteric is that the right word it's a, a, a obscure sorry horror you mentioned leslie nielsen fighting a bear mm -hmm. there's this famous scene that some people have seen the scene but they haven't seen the movie it's from it's uh where the zombie fights the shark the zombie's underwater and comes into contact with the shark and they fight. You can watch the fight scene on YouTube. It's from a it's from an Italian zombie film called Zombie Two. This is where the Italians used to take popular American films and then they would name their movies whatever that was. Like Troll Two is an example of that, and it had nothing to do with the original Troll or or Zombie Two had nothing to do with George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. But they tried to capitalize off of the success of Night of the Living Dead. Anyway, it's called Zombie Two. There is no zombie one <laughs> and it's really just awfully bad. So that's not on my list. Just if you want to see a zombie oh, fight a shark. Look, uh, a, little bit, next movie. Uh, uh -huh. a little bit of trivia, uh, Night of the Living Dead. The only reason it's in the public domain is because originally it was called Night of the Flesh Eaters and they asked them to change it to Night of the Living Dead and they did and they didn't trademark it. And so that's the reason it's in public domain. Wow. I didn't know that. What did you say, Mike? Is, it, is that one on your list? Zombie oh, no, two? I just thought that was your next movie. No, it's not. No, no, no. I'm not giving up a turn. No, no. <laughs> just watch that scene. Okay, uh, I'll be fast with this one, though. The Shining. It's not It's not obscure. But The Shining, 1980 by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, I love this film. My husband doesn't watch, has never watched a lot of horror. And I, I, he's watched two horror films with me which is a big, and so for anybody who's never watched horror, he really enjoyed The Shining. I recommend it because it's a beautifully executed film. And even if horror is not your genre, you will probably like this movie because it's so well done. The acting, the script, the, the, mm -hmm. the way the camera, the, the music, the mood that is set with it. And um, yeah, I just think it's great. Do you know I've never seen it? <gasps> I know, I, don't, I just never got around to it. 
Oh, you gotta see it. And it's I think I saw parts creepy. of it when I was a kid, but I don't remember. It's, I heard uh, the the I heard the sequel was actually Sleep. surprisingly good. Yeah, oh. for good things. I liked it. What? No, Tracy. I, the, I liked it. <laughs> it <was> bad. <laughs> I thought it was bad. I liked it. <laughs> I want to see, though, I want to see the both of them, and I also want to see that documentary about the interpretations of The Shining. There's so many, too. I mean, some people think it's the man's journey into madness or the wife's journey into madness, and she's mm. seeing all these things. And then others, you know, it's actually a haunted hotel, and he's been possessed. But, you know, it's... The, the sequel does answer those questions, which is why you need to watch The Shining first. <laughs> But. Oh, I want to watch it now. <laughs> it's good. I'm gonna watch it tonight. <laughs> okay, Mikey. Mine. Okay, I'm gonna go total guilty pleasure. Trash fest. So good. Halloween six: The Curse of Michael Myers. <laughs> One of my favorite Halloween. <gasps> I and love I you. <laughs> I love I it, I and I also like person. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I yes! thought it was a nice little movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, this movie is so horrendous that, I mean, I love it, but it was consi- it was such a disaster, the making of it, that there are two versions. There mm-hmm. are many other out there. There are two versions. We're watching the theatrical cut. Screw the producer's cut, where they put, like, little stones that stop him. No. Um, mm. Theatrical cut. I just think so first of all, the cinematography, the atmosphere, I think is the best in the entire franchise. It's just so weird and interesting. So this movie takes a big turn and it got totally ignored after it made such a mess of things that the next movie, they were like, we're just going to ignore all the sequels. Mm. But it comes up with this origin of Michael Myers that he's under the curse of ancient runes. I don't know what ancient runes are, but that's what's cursing him. And it's a cult. And so it's the mm. cult of Thorn. And they're like impregnating people and like want to possess this kid. And it's a mess of a movie. And it is so good. I, I, I love it. it a million times. And it's Paul, one of Paul Rudd's first movies too. And he's so good at it. He's so yeah. He's so good in it. Weird and creepy and kind of skeevy in it. He's so good. He plays the, the boy acting. that Jamie Lee Curtis was babysitting in the first one when uh, uh, Michael Myers attacked. So I'll hear him all grown up. And he's he has been scarred by that night. <laughs> he is just... But There's it, something it's about this movie thing. that's just so nostalgic and it feels so 90s and so suburban and so so much like fall it's it's so good it really is good i really wish that they would have made more me too they just discarded the whole jamie uh jamie lloyd they just yeah i didn't like that how they took her out and recast her like that was lame and they know and then they just totally dropped all three of all all the movies that had anything to jamie lloyd because she was supposedly laurie stroud's daughter you know, Michael Myers was after her, and if they had kept the, her in there, that would have been, they, they might have been able to salvage this last Halloween movie if Jamie was still around. And I uh, I listened to an interview with the writer who had talked about what his plan was for the next movie, mm-hmm. that it was going to be like the whole town of Haddonfield was in with the cult and stuff. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, my dream for a Halloween sequel, which will never happen, but I wish it would, is that they would do like a Michael Myers multiverse and bring all the sequels together. That would be awesome. <laughs> It'll never happen, probably, but that would be amazing. When you first okay. intro- introduced this film, Mikey, when you were telling us what your pick was here, you said uh, it's Trash Fest. And I thought that was the name of the movie at first before you said. <laughs> <laughs> did you Google it? What did you find? A trash fest. <laughs> You're like, no, it's just a little bit trash. It's kind of it's a glorious train wreck. Trash like fest should be a movie coming though. out of his head by the end of it. <laughs> For no no explanation. They have alien babies on the wall. No explanation. No. Like it's so good though. <sighs> I, and I think it's I think it's definitely the most rewatchable Halloween movie. I, I really enjoy it. Halloween Two: Season of the Witch was really good too because that really followed a John Carpenter's 
vision of it being an anthology series, but they just wanted, you know, Michael Myers, Michael Myers, Michael Myers. So he never got past that. I, I wish that movie would have just been called Season of the Witch and wasn't yeah. a Halloween movie. They could, didn't even need the Halloween classic. title. My next obscure movie, I'm putting these together into a bundle because they're Ooh, one feature. a film and a sequel. But that is 1971's Willard and 1972's Ben. Nope, 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 <laughs> nope, nope, nope. The, the rats, right? The rat attack movies. Nope. You do have a theme with the, the animals, I see. I like it. Animal horror was at its best in the 70s. I mean, that's when Jaws and Frogs and <laughs> all the good ones came out. Killer Bees. Tracy, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt just quickly. If there's one movie on this earth that I promise you I will never watch, it is Willard. <laughs> when I was a kid, they had the remake come out. And it's I would lover. run, because I have such a phobia of rats, that I would run. If the trailer came on the TV or in a movie theater, I was out of there. I won't talk too much about it, but I really enjoyed them. And I'm kind of rat phobic too. But for some reason, these movies do not bother me. Um, you know, Michael Jackson almost was nominated for an Academy Award for the his song in, in the second one, Ben. Ben's song. Um, you, you just had a Meredith Baxter Bernie was in it. Well, of course she was Meredith Baxter Bernie. She was in it. Um, just a whole lot of really good actors and uh, Ernest Borgnine. So many people in those in those two movies, but um, really good, very creepy. Really, it's about a social act outcast that finds a strange group of friends, both of them, and then uses them to seek revenge on those that have wronged them. <laughs> nope. Did you see the remake of Willard? The Crispin the... Glover, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crispin Glover could read a cereal box and made it make it creepy. Yeah, he's just oh, that yeah. kind of guy. <laughs> One of the comedians I used to manage, she was married to this guy for a while who was like into super creepy art and artifacts and would go on ebay and buy like all these old embalming equipment and needles and things and caskets and and he would often get into bidding wars with crispin glover <laughs> he actually owns like a an old mansion i want to say it's in poland um that he's basically fixed up fixed up like a horror mansion so he's very much into that oh genre. no okay that makes yeah. sense now yeah you just I, that, that memory I, I haven't thought of that in years but yeah he was like crispin glover got the syringe that i wanted or whatever <laughs> <laughs> that's all i'll say about them <laughs> so i don't actually anybody just been you made me think of it because Crispin Glover's in one of them, but I actually, if you can believe it, I've never seen the Friday the 13th movies, so I've been marathoning them. Oh. One of them. Maybe it's just me. I'm so not into them. I'm so just... Well, they're I one of my what... favorite franchises. I Maybe just, it's they're I just guilty pleasures, you know. I just can't pay attention when they're on. For talking about reason. part four. I, I've watched the first <laughs> four now. I couldn't tell you one thing that happened. Well, Chris Glover's dance them? in part four is worth watching the whole movie when he's dancing. Yeah, that's the one thing I remember. <laughs> Okay, so my next one is uh, a 2002 film called May by Lucky McKee. Have May. you guys seen this? No, but I've heard no. of it. I've heard so of it. So it stars Angela Bettis. And um, I guess if I have a couple of themes, well, one of them is just uh, maybe female monsters. And not always, but anyway, May is, she, she is a very awkward, unusual weirdo and eccentric. And uh, she has a lazy eye and she has never really fit in as a kid. And anyway, she meets this guy 
and uh gosh what's that actor's name he's the guy that was in um um oh it doesn't matter it'll come to me in a minute but anyway jeremy cisco she meets this guy and and they start to date and at first it's sort of about like when you meet someone you're like oh that person's so weird and different like i like them they're so weird and then you realize wait a minute there's something really Really not right (laughs) (laughs) like they're not just weird in a lovable way they're weird in like oh they're going to kill you way and uh she's almost what i would call like maybe borderline personality disorder or obsessive and definitely sociopathic and just it goes out of control she has a doll named Susie who is her only friend and that her mom made for her who has like a patchwork a beautiful dress and she sews and there's a her co-worker is played by oh it's another actress that people recognize uh Anna Ferris and she Anna Ferris starts like hitting on her and there anyway there's just May just loses it I'm not going to say what happens but things go really 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 wrong (laughs) and it's kind of watching this it's terrifying yeah Angela Bettis didn't she play Carrie in one of the remakes yeah yes yeah when it's the mate was it the made for tv Carrie yeah she was there which actually was really good it was better than the fucking Rage Two. Oh, the I love rage, the I love Rage. Two. I love Ray the Rage. <laughs> it was like I mean, in the nineties, I was a young adult, you know, late teen, early adult. So it was so stereotypical nineties. It's just like a perfect time capsule of nineties genre, nineties horror, nineties music. I love it. <laughs> I don't I think go? I've seen that one. Um. Okay, I'm going to go with one, trying to hit on, like, different genres. I'm going to go with a horror comedy. Um, This is just a straight-up good movie, whatever the genre, because I feel like this is kind of thematically relevant to a lot of the things I like. The Final Girls. You guys seen this? No. No. Oh, it is so good. Um, Did you ever see that movie Pleasantville? Yes. Yeah. So imagine if Pleasantville, instead of having like a 1950s sitcom that they get sucked into was a cheesy 80s slasher movie (laughs) so there's this girl who's very close with her mother mother dies that's not a spoiler it happens right away um and her mother was in a bunch of horror movies in the 80s so her and her friends go to a screening of it one thing at least they get trapped inside the movie anyway though her mother is in the movie as an actress that they're second so she wants she's trying to like rewrite history and stuff but to escape being stuck in the movie she has to fulfill her destiny of becoming the final girl and it's surprisingly emotional with the mother-daughter relationship and it has an amazing cast it has all the 80s slasher elements that they make fun of it is so good awesome that you have a genre too yeah for sure a theme Anyway, the final girl. <laughs> <laughs> this one's it's called the final girls because there's a movie called Final Girl. And when I first tried watching this, I, I sat through like a half hour of this horrible movie with this chubby girl called the final girl. And it was horrible. <laughs> so, final girls with an S. It was I'll the chick who played out. Little Miss Sunshine and she sucks. Mm. I don't know why she like no offense, but I don't know why they keep casting her and stuff. She's horrible. <laughs> that feels so bitchy to say but, but it's true no honest is honest i love that well i'm gonna play off your theme of um final girl with one of the strongest final girls ever and that is in 1978's day of the woman also known in america as i spit on your grave that yeah. is a strong final girl mm-hmm. <laughs> um it's a, a very particular genre of horror called exploitation horror. I'm typically not a fan. It's probably the only one of that genre that I actually like. But it really, you know, just paints the worst of humanity. And it, it's like one of those, like I talked about, that could be a slice of life film. And then it just takes this really dark turn. And if you are, your stomach is turned by graphic depictions of sexual crimes, do not watch it. But if you also can stomach that, 
the good stuff is coming because she does get revenge. Wow. I love that. It, yeah. Is it kind of like, uh, I don't think I've seen it. I know the name, uh, mm -hmm. but it, I have seen the original Last House on the left. Which I, I'd say it's that, that's the same genre, right? Exploitation where it's just yeah. absolute torture and murder. and Yeah. 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 I, th I thought the remake of Last House on the Left was a bit underrated. It wasn't. Yeah. It was pretty good. the The remake of I Spit on Your Grave is actually really good too. They did a remake. Yeah, they did. Uh, it's a little more toned down, but yeah. um, it, she's a little more methodical than the original. But um, it's really good. They actually did three. They did sequels, of course, because that one did so well. But uh, just ignore the sequels and just watch the remake. It, it was right. actually really good. When did they do a remake? I didn't even know. Early two thousands. Of course. I'm looking at okay. So my next one is uh based on a true crime. This is right up your alley, baby Tracy. It's um in her skin. I forget what year this was. It's an Australian film mm -hmm. and it's based on an Australian murder. Uh, you're shaking your head, so you might be familiar with this. Sam Neill is in it, mm -hmm. and it's about the murder of, the, uh, of this girl, Rachel Barber, by her sort of friend and one-time babysitter, uh, this girl who's just a little bit older, uh, Caroline Robertson. And the movie is just, it's one of those crimes that's fascinating to me, and then the movie, I think, is well done. It's, I like the music in it as well. It's, it's very, it sets a mood. Um, but it, again, you've got this girl who has, there's something wrong with her. Okay. Borderline personality disorder, maybe something. She becomes obsessive. She hates herself. Uh, she hates herself so much. And, and then she looks at her neighbor, this girl, this younger girl, Rachel, as someone who has everything she wants, like the perfect girl. And she becomes obsessed with her. And her admiration for this girl turns to a burning resentment and hatred. Does she have a YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say... <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's fascinating from that perspective of, of like, what is that that, dri that drives this sort of... Uh, obsession and resentment almost like a single white female maybe kind of yeah. a resent movie and uh but ba but a true crime this really happened this murder really happened yeah. and well, the what makes a sociopath kind of movie yeah <laughs> what makes a sociopath and it's crazy like her her writings and stuff she used to write letters to her dad you can go and some of those they replicate some of those in the film but you can find those online and it was just something someone should have stepped in a long time ago like there were so many problems with this girl and in her home life and uh uh yeah anyway she i don't know i don't know what to say if you're into true crime you'll like this it one. sounds good i want to watch it i've never seen it in her skin yeah yours are really good Ooh, yeah. both of yours i want to watch all of these now you know what's a really good one this isn't on my list because it's it's not a horror it's more of a thriller have you guys ever seen the hand that rocks the cradle yeah Yes. Yeah. One of my that's favorites. My, that's one of my favorites of those. I call it the crazy bitch genre. Yeah. The crazy bitch genre. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Single white females where also you're like, good. Bitch is crazy. And fatal yeah. attraction. All of those. Fatal attraction. Yeah. They Misery. had one that was really good. It's more of a thriller, so I, I shouldn't put it on my list. But they uh, had a male crazy bitch movie that was really good called The Guest. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was really good. It was a crazy bitch movie where it's a guy. So good. Um, hot guy too i don't care if he's nuts i would hit that if uh, along those genre i mean i'm not allowed i don't think i'm allowed to call her ellen page anymore i think it's elliot page now but uh hard the candy person on earth yeah hard, hard candy. candy yeah yes yes not quite a crazy bitch movie though she was but she's definitely yeah let's just say if, if you if you want to see a, a pedo get revenge taken on him, it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> swim fan was a fun one too. Remember yeah. swim fan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what should I go with next? Okay, I'm gonna go with one that I feel like not many people know of. It's recent too. Um, so usually I 
prefer anthology movies in theory. I feel like they sound like they'd good. They're never good in practice. It's always like only one or two segments are decent. This has to be the best one I've ever seen. It's because every segment is good. It's called the Mortuary Collection. Have you guys heard of that? No. I have to check that out. Because I like anthologies. Me. I really do. I really think this is the best one I've seen. Um, it's just so interesting. Every segment is kick-ass. There's one segment in it that um, puts the question to the test of can men get pregnant? It's exactly what you think. Um, wow. <laughs> and there's another segment that sort of takes the 70s babysitter slasher trope and flips it way the hell around in 10 different ways. And it's so good. And it has, I think, like one of the greatest performances in the last decade, at least, by Clancy Brown, who plays this sort of undertaker that tells the stories. And there's a girl who's sort of trying to be like the apprentice to the undertaker, but there's a lot more going on with the both of them. Oh, it's so good. I, I really do love an anthologies. Tales from the Dark Side, the movie was a great, to me, was a great one. Yeah, Debbie Harry. Yeah. Uh, creep show, um, cat's Trick eye is one of my favorites. Which one? Cat's eye. I forgot about that. Uh, the the one with Drew Barrymore with the little uh, troll living in the wall. Stephen King actually wrote that just for that movie. Or um, wow. what was it called? Uh, Trilogy of Terror. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if you like trilogies, that second one I mentioned, Old Boy, the Korean one. Mm -hmm. That's part of a trilogy. Ooh, if you okay. like it, there's two others in that. That 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 obviously it's a trilogy. Duh, Carrie. Okay. <laughs> um. So Carrie, I'm going to follow you into the world of Asian horror with my next one. Okay. Uh, 2018's The Pool. It is a uh, a Thai film. I'm not going to even attempt to to uh, pronounce the actors or the director's name. But let's just say that it's a man and a woman that are trapped in a six meter deep pool that has had all the water drained out of it and a crocodile that has been debedded <laughs> from uh, local local areas uh, end up in there. And it's not like your typical, it's not an animal horror, it's a psychological horror. The crocodile really isn't that big of a threat to them. It's more in their own head because he's a, he's a diabetic, his insulin is up. <laughs> on the bank of the pool he can't get to it his dog is chained up there oh. uh he's his, the dog almost jumps into the pool a couple of times so he tries to keep his dog from essentially hanging itself oh. his girlfriend's pregnant she gets really sick it's just him trying to figure out a way to get them out of that pool once again i misheard and when you first said he's a diabetic i thought you were talking about the crocodile that's why i smiled <laughs> <laughs> You're like, but the crocodile's not that big a deal because he's a diabetic. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, wait, no, just some of the guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, the crocodile is kind of a protagonist, but it's not the main thing. It's them trying to figure out a way. You would think getting out of a pool would be quite a simple thing to do, but not but in this case. case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have you never know. heard of this one. It's Me really either. good. Awesome. You know what movie I thought was super overrated? That recent one with the crocodile that everyone said it was so great. And then I was like, mm. what was it called? Um, was Crawl? that the one with Betty White? That no, was several years no. ago. No, oh, I wanted to see that. I've never seen that. Um, Lake Placid. Lake Placid, yeah. No, this, I think it was Crawl. It came out a couple years ago. Okay. Everyone said it was so great. I was like, yeah. mm. eh. Modern day animal attacks, I, I I don't really care for. They don't do yeah. them right. <laughs> You're like, nah. Nah. I like the old school. Yeah. You're like, in my day, we had animal attacks. Well, I, I wasn't like old enough to see these movies when they came out. I was, I was born in 75. I'm not that old. But I saw most of these in the 80s when I was a kid. <laughs> Usually on like Saturday morning, uh, like on a re the regional horror shows like Elvira, um, uh grandpa munster used to host one on cable i i saw exactly. all these old movies on there yeah yeah so my next one is and maybe i probably have a couple of i guess like true crime or thriller kind of movies on this list but i put them all in the same group in my mind um the next one is another one based on a 
true crime. It's 1994's Heavenly Creatures by Peter Peter Jackson. Mm-hmm. I've always Just wanted to see that. And I never have. It's great. Kate Winslet's in it. It's um, it's based on the 1954 uh, murders of uh, it, it, it was these two girls, these two girls who became best of friends, uh, Pauline Parker and Julia Hume, and they sort of developed this fantasy imaginary world, and they 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 both had a, a great imagination, and they they ended up you see them what led up to them deciding that it would be a good idea to kill the parents of one of the girls was it pauline's parents mm-hmm. um and this really happens based on true story and if you go ahead. if you want to hear the best retelling of the actual story check mm-hmm. out a true crime friend of mine stephanie harlow she did oh. a four four parter on them I, love her. I will definitely she watch that. is the bomb diggity when it comes you to know her? Uh, true crime yeah we, we've talked several times i mean we're not bosom buddies or anything but she knows who i am i know who she is we talked quite a bit i love her yeah so she's really a sweetheart too she really is one of the girls um juliet uh hume who's mm-hmm. played by kate winslet mm-hmm. um is now so after she got out of prison, um, they because they were they were 15 years old, and I I think they only she only served like five years, and for this brutal murder two people, mm-hmm. and she became a, a, a what do you call it a, like a thrill a mystery writer a thriller writer she has a new name Anne Perry, and she writes detective fiction. She ought to know. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Do people know that? Like who read her books? I think people know that now. For a while they may not have, but yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's like, well, yeah, I'm just gonna get my favorite writer. Well, you know, what did you do in your life? What's in your bio, right? Like you look on the author page and it's like, at 15, she brutally murdered her best friend's parents. And then she started after serving a five-year sentence. Now she writes detective novel. It's like gosh. A lot of child child killers in Australia and Europe, particularly England. They like after they're out of jail, they get new names, they get new identities, and they're kind of protected by the state. Um, I, I I did a whole evil kids series, and I talk about a couple of them that have just disappeared into society with a new name, particularly wow. in the UK. Wow, I, oh, Tracy, we got to talk some more. I want to hear about some of these stories. You know, um, it's a really horrifying movie. It's a short film. It's on YouTube. I forget the name of it, but there was um this true crime case in the UK where there's these two kids killed this younger kid. Yes. That's one of them. That's one of them. And uh, both of those boys were branded with new names and just disappeared into society. Have you guys seen the the short film that they did about it? Oh, no. it was disturbing. No, no. no I haven't. I'll have to check that out. I, it was I, I, I read a lot. I forget the name. But... I read a lot about that case and I did it as part of my Evil Kids series, but I I didn't watch that movie. And this is why I love you. Your Evil Kids series. <laughs> evil That's kids amazing. Series. Well, there's a lot um, of Evil Kids or Twisted fun, Kids. Fun note, just a little last note on that film, because I don't think I mentioned the director. That Heavenly Creatures film, for anyone interested, is Peter Jackson. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, he's he has such an interesting film history. He's done he just everything- loves film. He just, he just loves, loves film. The yeah, loves a good story. He loves a good story. Yeah, yeah. He did the Frighteners. That was great. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Frighteners. Meet the Feebles. Oh, okay. that was so messed up. That freaking weird perverted Muppet movie. He did that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead I Alive. I found that to be like one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. Something about it creeped well, me yeah. out. Can you imagine though when he was making Lord of the Rings and you know those movies, The Hobbit that. I think, how long were they in New Zealand? I think it was several years they were there when they were making those. And, but can you imagine Peter, you're in a Peter Jackson movie. All you know is you're going to Australia with Peter Jackson. You're going to be there four or five years and it's going to be the best experience of your life. Would that not be thrilling? Yeah. Well, <laughs> before, before it became a big thing and people knew how great the films were though, if all you knew about him was that he directed Meet the Feebles. And you're on the plane, yeah. like, I'm going to spend five years with the Meet the Feebles guy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I looked it up that movie with the kid. It's called Detainment. It's on YouTube. It's only like a half hour. Uh, it's so good. Oh, it's Thank you. Stop. 